obviously it's a hot rod. Modifying everything is the option. I want to bring you guys along for this disaster. Who would have thought? You take a Model A chassis from 1928 and a 1927 Ford body, and then you replace the engine, the transmission, the front axle, the rear axle, the steering, the brakes, eventually the gas tank, and it's just nothing fits. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Today, we're gonna to be dealing with the driver's side of this hot rod, basically from the engine to about the driver's seat. And that, in a car like this, is an area just fraught with peril. That area must contain all the mechanisms that make the car do car things. The go pedal, the stop pedal, the clutch pedal, the steering, the exhaust has to pass under there. All of the related accoutrements must fit in as well, which means master cylinder, oh, shifter, shift rods. I'm tired just thinking about it. So today we're gonna gather all the parts and pieces we have, steering, pedal assemblies, master cylinder, shifter, shift linkages, and just, just pile it in and see if we can figure out what might work, what's gotta get modified, everything and uh what we need to order which is probably a lot and expensive so grab your band-aids this is probably going to be a bloodbath both like for our minds and our wallets i don't know why we do this i just don't get it yeah uh-huh yeah okay all right all right, gang, if you guys have been watching the show for any period of time, I say thank you very much, first and foremost. Second, you might think this car is going to be the death of this guy. Or maybe that's just what I'm thinking, because it, I can't seem to, to break through. Like, I'm trying to light a fire, but I just keep getting burned. So, so the car is up on the lift, and, you know, as it would turn out, you know, Got it up here, was really excited to work on it, and then suddenly we have a weird vibration on the daily driver truck over there. So of course I got to climb under it because I can't get it in here. And I think the carrier bearing is having a hard time, two-piece drive shaft thing, but I'd also like to be able to look for it. So I got to get this car to where it can steer and move a little more easily. In fact, there's almost no excuse for it not being there already, but, you know, that's how it goes with these projects, I suppose. So now that we've got it up in the air, I think I'm gonna do the proverbial throw everything I've got at it and see what sticks. And specifically, I gotta start working in this whole area. The driver's side of a hot rod is just packed full of stuff. Since I've been working on this for almost a year and a half, I've got parts stashed everywhere. So we're gonna start working in this area. Now, if you're building a hot rod, this is, the, this is like the hardest spot because you need to get a steering box in here. The steering column has to connect to it. You need to get your exhaust out of here somehow. You need a pedal assembly that operates at least a brake, in our case, a brake and a clutch. We need a shifter linkage and all of it kind of goes about, you know, in a space not quite as wide as my hand. So, and I realized this is, I think this is an old style canister filter, paper filter. So I might need to be converting that to more of the <laughs> screw on type. Let's, uh, let's gather some parts and, and, and cogitate a plan. Parts and pieces. I got a Vega steering box with a Pitman arm and a bounting bracket. I've never run a Vega box before. Uh, I decided that I wanted a not so sloppy steering box. And I needed cross steer because something like an F1 box, even if I wanted to be cool and run it, uh, is not gonna work with the fenders I'm gonna run. So cross steer was it. So if I was gonna do cross steer, I wanted a new one anyway because sloppy steering at 70 miles an hour is not good. Cross steer is specific geometry, so we can kind of maybe just bolt this thing together and then clamp it on and just let that own the space that it owns. Uh, I've got this, we've talked about it a little bit before. It is a, Power booster, master cylinder, brake pedal assembly. I got it in a box of parts when I bought somebody else's project out. Um, in addition, I went ahead and ordered another pedal assembly because I need a clutch pedal. So I thought if I could get another pedal like this, 
modify this whole bracket somehow to accept two pedals side by side. This thing, it's actually pretty well built. It's got a bushing in here and all of that. And I realized building one was gonna be, well, not, I don't have the machining tools to build another pedal. So I bought this whole assembly so that I can maybe slide a clutch right here on this shaft, which is gonna take some, it's gonna take some doing, but that I think I do have the fabric fabrication capacity to do. So that's gotta happen, but we can shove this thing in the hole because it's gotta go in kind of a specific place, like wherever your foot goes. And uh, then we can start looking at how, how, how much trouble we're really in because there's just not a lot of space and there's a lot of stuff. And this stuff's really big. So we don't need power brakes, but if we can use it because I have it, we're gonna use it because it would make driving a little bit, I don't know, more pleasurable, I suppose. And potentially, you know, 2% safer. I mean, mechanical brakes are fine if you got the leg for it, which I do. So let's dive in. I think I'm gonna start with the steering box because it has to go in a very specific spot. We got the Vega box half set up. I just had to bolt through. This is indeed threaded, but I don't know what size it is. If it's standard, I guess it's a half inch bolt, which I don't have, so that plate's on there. More importantly, this arm. Um, you kind of have to guess for the middle of the travel. That's your best setup because the steering shaft comes in on this side and then this will be pointed down. But basically you want this arm to be centered so that when you turn right or left, you have equal travel in both directions. The way I do that is I made a mark on that, swung the arm its entire distance, counted the rotations here, found the middle, put it on straight. We may very well have to adjust this because if the frame is a little bit at an angle, we can correct it with the Pitman arm. So I've got a tie rod in the mail. The tie rod, remember everybody, is the piece that goes from the steering arm on the spindle to the steering arm on the spindle, thus tying the wheels together. The drag link is going to go from the back hole on the passenger side to the steering box that we're gonna mount somewhere over here on the driver's side. Some people you'll see when Iron Trap sets up their steering and bends the steering arms and all of that jazz, they cut this one off. That's because they're using a push-pull kind of box and they move the steering over to the driver's side. It works, the geometry is better with a cross steer. But speaking of cross steer geometry, the best geometry you're gonna get is if the drag link and the tie rod are parallel. Does it have to be that way? No, it's just the best. So that's where we're gonna start. It also puts the steering box in front of this motor mount, which complicates things and we're gonna, so we'll go ahead and clamp it up there to see what's in the way. I mean, on the one hand, it's in the way of the motor mount. On the other hand, right behind the motor mount is the center exhaust. So if you have, you know, standard ram's horns or whatever, I've got every kind of ram's horn ever made, front dump, rear dump, middle dump, everything. So hoping we can make one of those work. Also, I have a set of lake pipes, if that's, <laughs> that's how rowdy we wanna go. But I don't know that I do. I kinda, with the fenders and everything, I like, I, I, I feel like big shiny lake pipes sticking out the side is, it's a little too much but that's how I feel right now. Also, while we're eyeballing and mocking stuff up, you will notice that right now, my little pieces of steel that are representing the tie rod and drag link are above the wishbones. Traditionally, you would bend the steering arm and bring it down below the wishbone, which is something I may need to do. Uh, the tie rod ends will not fit in the way they're supposed to right now, but I could, in theory, go up or down. I think I have enough travel here uh, and enough clearance because obviously the wishbone and the wheel are going to move together, but they're gonna run into the frame eventually. But I think I have just enough room if I wanna go right above. And I haven't decided that. One of the reasons I need to mock the steering up is to figure that out. I'm gonna do my best to show you guys what's uh, kinda going on here. So this is just as roughly, loosely clamped as I could possibly get it to just sit there. So this, is the tie rod, which means we need to move this point back about an inch and a half to be in line with the correct geometry for the drag link. So, but to move back, we are running into our motor mount. Maybe if I came down a good bit, I could slide it back. I have to look at it from the top. 
All right, so from the top, you can kind of see it might barely clear. This is what's keeping it up right now. So if I pulled this bolt, in theory, we could drop it down and then maybe even slide it back just a little bit around this casting here. Um, obviously, this could go, this will need to kind of cruise down a little bit anyway. We'll need to be able to get a tie rod up under the far side. I'm just using this for an example which means that has to come down. So this is fitment issues, you know, it's not, there's several ways to solve the problem. And I think the reality is it's gonna take a combination of everything, but no matter what, we're too far forward. Up and down, we can deal with, but if moving the whole box down to get us further back is our starting point, that's where we're gonna start. So let's start there. All right, I've been fussing with this for like an hour. Who would have thought? You take a Model A chassis from 1928 and the 1927 Ford body, and then you replace the engine, the transmission, the front axle, the rear axle, the steering, the brakes, eventually the gas tank, and it's just nothing fits. All right, I've been jockeying this thing around for about a half an hour, and it's in a place. So let's see if you guys can see in there. Right now, I could go up about three quarters of an inch if I wanted to, and we'll see. That may be the thing to do. Coming down here, it's a little lower than I'd like, but it's not really lower than this wishbone. But granted, this wishbone will travel up when the tire goes over a bump. That will not. So we may take that three quarters of an inch out. But what we did get correct is with our lineup of trying to be parallel with our tie rod, we're pert near close to being centered Obviously, I just have two pieces of rod because my stuff is in the mail. You can see, like, I got about three quarters of an inch there, and this is where the steering joints need to come through. So they'll need to run somewhere back this way along the frame and then turn up to our steering column. So, steering column. Well, I bought this. Let's talk about it. This is a 63 Impala steering column. Uh, obviously, it was a three-speed on the column. And, you know, it be is in the early generations of standard GM wiring. I jumped on it because I wanted something cool to run in this car, and I wasn't really particular, but early Ford stuff's really expensive it's if it's going to be decent. Uh, and this had the added benefit of being cheap, local, and it has the turn signal knob is missing right here, but this has turn signals in the housing. And believe it or not, I think turn signals are pretty important in a hot rod because I... Uh, Guys, it's, it's dangerous out there. People are, like cars have touch screens, right? They're not looking at the road, they're trying to touch screen. So you gotta, you gotta try to get attention where you can. Bright ass lights and turn signals. It was cheap, I think 75 bucks. I bought two of them, maybe 60 bucks. I bought two of them, uh, one for the Mercury and one for this car. I thought, well, I just wanted a cool steering wheel. Early 60s is kind of, you know, it matches the engine and transmission we're putting in this thing and the rear end for that matter. Not like I'm going for period correct, but a little cohesiveness doesn't hurt anybody. All right, team. So let's see if we can jam this big honking 60s McGillicuddy in here. Obviously, we're going to be trimming a little weight off of this fella. Oh, with this bracket freeze and whatever else. That's interesting. Huh. Wouldn't. Okay. All right. I mean, the shifter guy is gonna go in your right hand. I thought this went down, but apparently it doesn't. It goes up. So, I wonder if that actually might turn out to be useful. I doubt it. What are the odds it ends up being very in the way? Yeah, the answer is like 11. The odds are 11. Well, well that's not awful. Sooner than later, we're going to have to start to build a seat to figure out where this goes because it's uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. All right, this isn't bad, but this bracket, I think, has to go because we might, you know. Okay, it's all up in our exhaust pipes. Uh, so heavy. It's like doubling the weight of the car. All right, we are full blown in the house of cards phase. So we kind of have to keep stacking crap without attaching anything. And if all goes well, we'll be able to adjust the house of cards without knocking it over 
And then eventually we'll just glue it all together. By glue, I mean weld, and then you know the metaphor is over, and we have a hot rod instead of a house of cards. So right now, I just got a ratchet strap running from one side of the car to the other to hold up this side of the column, and then I've got a clamp under this end of the column, just kind of holding it up. But whatever you can find, blocks, clamps, straps, bungee cords, that's what you're gonna need for this phase, in my personal opinion, and a lot of them. But, but, look at that, look at that. Look at that, look at that. Uh, that's purely accidental, right? I just, it just kind of landed there on my first go of shuffling stuff around. So I'm actually, I mean, it's not exactly about where it is so much, but it looks so cool. I have a little bit of experience in this field. So my eyeballing is telling me two things. I'm clear of the door, which is important. I'm clear of the windshield, which is also very important. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I'm too far back to like crush myself. Like I think I can still get in. I can definitely like bow and loop duke it into the top. So that's fine. We might be able to squeak it another inch or so forward. But again, we're in mock-up phase, mock-up phase, mock-up phase. So let's look at what this is telling us. Somehow we'll have to get the end of this attached to the end of this, but that seems entirely doable in our particular situation and the exhaust comes down it even looks like the exhaust will be able to tuck around it if we run exhaust on the inside here which i think it's what we're going to do this definitely eliminates the idea of the rear dump exhaust that's gone so we have to go with a similar exhaust i don't think a front exhaust is going to get us anywhere either so we need to leave this area clear for exhaust why because every other area is taken Lake pipes would still work, but let's, I want the option to run a hood and all the other stuff. So until I decide, center dump exhaust. Have I said center dump exhaust yet? This feels a fuzz tight on the exhaust and that's fine. It can go down a little bit and that won't affect that part. But what it will affect is I need access to this bolt hole right here. Cause my goal is to run the bell crank for the clutch off of this pole. So I'll pull something here, run across mount here. And then the clutch pedal will push this down, which will swing under and push that back. It might fit. I mean, by the, for this area of a hot rod, it's fit or don't fit, right? There's not like clearance. There's not like anything, but two things that have to move independently rubbing on each other fits. We got 10 pounds of hot rod in a, 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 a not that much hot rod bag. Yeah. With the steering box and the steering column, unmodified both, we're at a might fit situation, which is way better than expected. One should go into something like this expecting a don't fit situation and plan on cutting up a bunch of stuff that they've already done to try to make it fit more better and shift the priorities. It's like, what's more important, brakes or steering? It's like, well, you know, both. So this column is modifiable if we need to. I mean, obviously we're gonna to have to modify it to get the right joints and stuff in there, but in theory, we could hack it off right here and start putting universal joints in to, you know, get the steering the way we want it. Uh, if we do the fancy, like too many U-joint steering and we do it correctly, it would actually technically be kind of safer because, you know, right now, if this thing crumples up, that becomes, you know, a jousting lance to stab you right there if you have your steering run down and then turn 90 if this thing starts to fold that steering knuckle will just break so all right we're kind of mocked up but you can see how little room there is down here for a clutch and brake pedal and this thing is not channeled so that's something to think about there folks every inch you channel it you're gonna lose an inch down here and that's uh it's valuable valuable space so just saying it can obviously be done i'm just just saying uh, the last one I did was channeled about three inches and I ended up having to use swing pedals. So pedals coming in from the top. I am going to try to go through the floor on this one. We'll see if it works. I don't know if it will or not. That's what this is all about. Currently the idea is to use this guy as it is. And then I purchased basically just the assembly, the pedal assembly here to take this pedal off and maybe use it as a clutch pedal in this spot right here. Obviously that's going to take a decent amount of modifications. Anyway, this thing basically just sleeves over this metal part, but this metal part is threaded with Zerk fitting so that you can grease the brass bushings that are inside the brake pedal. So 
But first things first, let's lift the car up and see if we can just jam this thing in because it may not fit at all. And then we have to choose, do we start to pivot on the brakes or do we start to modify the steering column? Because obviously it's a hot rod, modifying everything is the option. No one, no one should be surprised. So now our transmission mount, AKA this ratchet strap that's wound well, tighter than a drum at the moment, so we need to solve that, is a little bit in the way of this whole contraption, but obviously we could come off the back. There's all sorts of ways to do a transmission mount, which is why I was hoping to kind of do it last because basically it's just gotta be stout and hold it up, but it can be a K member, it can be a U thing, like, like, Transmission doesn't care. It just wants to be at the right height and centered. That's what it wants. So I'm going to see if we can work around this guy while we try to shoehorn this pedal assembly in. And then once it's in, we can decide whether or not we can possibly fit a second pedal there. Yeah. And I, I also want to, you know, be able to control the brake pedal without having to tuck into the fetal position if I can help it. Discoveries, always discoveries. So I'm going to try to show you this without going full Blair Witch. So I just jammed the thing in the best I could. Uh, it's kind of on the transmission mount, which is this strap. And then I've got two clamps on the bracket. Clearly the bracket is lower on the frame than intended. I do believe this is for a Model A frame, but it may be sort of a universal Ford frame kind of thing. But the booster is obviously all up in where the shift rods go. So that's, we're not gonna be able to get a shifter connected back here past this booster to the shift lever. So it has to go that way if it's gonna be anywhere, right? I guess it could drop. I mean, it would have to drop so far down to matter. Yeah, it's gotta, it's just gotta go toward the frame. So we do have the space here because of this bracket. Uh, I have to have it lower because the pedal assembly, which is here, I hope you guys can see maybe up here is better. I can't see that, can you see that? So the pedal assembly was hitting this little cross piece that I put in, right? Which it, that ought to be around floor level. So that's there. Obviously we can modify it if we need to, but I don't know if we need to. So I'm gonna lower this thing down. We're gonna look at it from the top and then see what it means to move the entire unit this way. This system would probably work just fine if you had an automatic, although they are significantly wider than these. So I really don't know. I mean, it's just a bracket. We can build a new bracket. That's not a big deal. But just because we jam it next to the frame doesn't mean it'll work either. So let's bring her down. All right, first looks, everybody. So that pedal is not attached to the master cylinder right now. So it's just falling down and it's landing on the bell housing. But that's enough to tell me I don't think that we would have enough travel with the pedal as is. Now, the pedal's just half inch steel, so we can cut it, we can bend it, we can change the angles, we can do whatever we need to do to fix it, but we do want it to be in a comfortable ergonomic position. That said, I mean, that feels pretty high up there. It's almost like this whole thing wants to drop down a lot. The down might be a good idea, but over, also seems like a good idea toward the driver's side sort of cowl edge over this where the wiggly hand to go just gotta keep mocking it up just keep mocking it up unfortunately in addition to the just keep mocking it up no I, the strap is gonna be in the way so i need to come up with something else that can go there temporarily to hold the transmission or maybe just change my strapification to the tail shaft. I don't really know, but that is no longer doing the trick because it's now super duper in the way. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of two by fours. I'm stacked three deep. What is that? Four and a half inches uh, as a starting point for maybe what a seat might possibly be. So I got my new running board right here. And then we gotta just climb in without falling through which is, you know, we're, we're one-handed here because I want to bring you guys along for this disaster. Why don't you guys go there for a second? Okay, woo, splintery and found some broken screws. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Wow, this is really uncomfortable. Height-wise though, it's not bad. I'm kind of into this. I could, I could job on this, like shifty, shifty. Of course, I'm moving everything. Stay where you are. House of cards, house of cards, what I'm saying. 
That's actually not terrible for where that is. Uh, the gas pedal, I guess, would be right yonder, going burr -burr 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 And then this is not bad. Gas up to here. Of course, it'll be back here. That stinks a little bit, actually. I'll move that back. Oop. Trying to hold everything. Yeah, that's not great. So, I mean, I'd love to see that pedal a little lower. There's a bunch of ways to get it there. Um, so we're just gonna have to work on it. But what this is telling me is I'm not, yeah, look at that. I'm not terribly far off and this is continuing to be workable. Dog, it was, it's the mail. They're already gone. They know you're there. They were very afraid. They thought that's a big dog that's real tough. Cause you are, you're number one. All right, so of course my steering column is just all flopping or lopping all around. We'll go as high and tight as we can with this. We'll go as low as we can with that. And then the short version of this here is that we need to get this over that way as far as possible. But now I gotta get out of here without killing myself. It'd be easier if there was a floor, but we don't have a floor yet because we don't know where it goes either. All right. Oh yeah, that's not attached. Oh God, I can't see. Oh God. One of the things that you'll find in the mock-up phase is not so much the mock-up phase itself, it's like, you know, like things fit, they don't fit, shuffle them, look for solutions, but everything you're trying to kind of hold in place lightly so you can adjust weighs a ton. All right, so I'm gonna jam on one of these sets of ram's horn heads. This is a stock driver side thing meant to clear the steering box. I don't know if this will fit at all. Um, it does have the mounting holes in the front, which is something that the early ram's horns had because the heads on the 283s did not have accessory holes. Interesting. Kind of wonder if we need to center dump one of these, and I wonder if I have one. I might, gotta look around. Right now this will kind of do, but if the exhaust dropped straight down like regular block huggers and came out right through here, I might be better off. But I don't know. I mean, there's the steering box shaft. Don't know, don't know. This might work. Again, it's not our only option, but it is an option. So just put it all in there as a placeholder, gang. Put it all in there as a placeholder. The reason this is going in now is not necessarily to make me deal with this problem. And I'll show you why in a second. It's to deal with where this can go, right? If it's, that's my, this is my hard stop right here. So I can't really tilt it up much more without cutting it off somewhere up here, which is probably most likely what we're gonna end up doing anyway for a thousand and one reasons, but I'm just trying to see all the parts and pieces. Just in case you're following along at home and like gathering parts or whatever, uh, this is a stock ram's horn for the passenger side. Now there's a bunch of different ones, cars, trucks, there's all sorts of different things, but you'll be able to find a lot of these at the swap meets. So this is reversible and I can swap this. It just doesn't have the mounting brackets, but it does have the center dump if that's what I need. This is the set of aftermarket ram's horns that I got with the 350 that I'm painfully slowly rebuilding because I don't know what I'm doing, but you can see both of these are center dump, but have no accessory holes. We're fabricating here, so if you need to build a bracket that comes off these two holes and the bracket that mounts to it, you're totally capable of doing it. In fact, that's what I ended up doing on my 54 Chevy because, well, I just didn't know any better. I didn't know, I, I didn't know any better. It's got a 283 in it as well, and the heads don't have any accessory holes because it's a 283. And of course, if we don't love anything that we're doing over there with the ram's horns, we've got these loud ass lake pipes the thing about it that I don't want to do is exactly what would make it really cool, which is if the lake pipes are on the motor, the exhaust that drops down off the side of the lake pipe over here. So like the lake pipes come out here and make a blah, blah sound, but then you can drop a pipe straight down and run it along the body and put a muffler on it if you want it, which is a pretty cool look, but that would have to go through the fenders, which could be kind of Duesenbergy, super cool, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a little more obnoxious than I want this to be right now. 
Well, we're back under here. I jammed this piece in, but guess what, gang? I feel like I'm out of clamps, which you can never have too many, and I don't have enough, apparently. There's at least seven on this car already, so I guess we're gonna go pick up some more, because really I do. I wanna keep clamping everything in place, because I'm, I'm pretty non-committal about all this right now. But I also said I'd help a friend move this afternoon, and as miserable as moving is, you know, if a friend asks for help, you help them. So we're going to go do that and then maybe I'll get some clamps on the way back because if I move the transmission mount to this thing, just kind of like let it clamp it on here, let that take the weight, I can take our current transmission mount down and then this can come down and we'll take the bracket off and move it away and just see if we can find a happy medium where we can get our shifter rods to run basically straight that way where this booster is and we get our pedals in a situation where they might potentially work uh, and be kind of comfortable because, you know, the more comfortable it is, the more fun and safe it will be. So I'll see you in a GIF. Bam, just like that, it's the future now. So welcome back to Ryan's time travel garage. So we helped a friend move and that basically took up the whole day. And I grabbed all the dollies that I used to move this contraption around, the ones I bought for 11 American dollars. And boy, did they come in handy. I don't think that your, you know, standard lift caster kit would normally serve a purpose like that when helping a friend move. I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying if you don't have one, maybe start with $40 worth of dollies you can use somewhere rather than $400 worth of heavy specific tools for your one purpose. Anyway, we also did stop by Harbor Freight, got a bunch of new clamps so that we can clamp in our extra ghetto transmission holder upper so we can continue on moving around. Now I did have a thought. No, I haven't really jumped. Come, come with me, let's talk. One of the major issues that I've been dealing with, well, cogitating about, because I haven't dealt with anything yet, cogitating about is this big booster. Do I need power brakes on a car this small? No. Do I have a power brake booster? Yeah, so let's try it. So there's a couple things I realized. First is I can reduce the size of this bracket to move this thing over because right now we have a shift lever problem because, well, our shifter is going to go here-ish and we can't reach the shift rods that are in front of this thing right now. But then it occurred to me like, hey, wait a minute. Um, I'm trying to find the perfect spacing for this great, big, bulky contraption. And I thought, well... Can I, I can't see it, but maybe you guys can. There's nothing, is, can I, can I, is it there? So nothing is preventing me from extending this rod, right? So currently, because this is like a pedal assembly brake booster kit, the pedal assembly and the brake boost, I just don't fit. The, the pedal assembly and the brake booster mounting points are all attached to each other, but I guess what I'm saying is if I cut it to little pieces, there's no reason I can't mount the pedal assembly where I want it, the booster where I want it, and so long as they're in some kind of like straight line orientation from this pivot point on the pedal to this eye, you know, so that it doesn't like run all bizarro, I might be able to get the brake booster back here where there's nothing going on, you know what I'm saying? If I move it far enough back, maybe I could just flip up the seat and that's how I fill the brake fluids in the fluid filler madu. That's not ideal either. I guess we're gonna just clamp this in place so I can take my little strappy guy out, which is keeping us from moving this around. And then we can look again. All right. I feel like a groundhog. This is really weird working on a lift. On the one hand, it's proving really convenient in a lot of ways because I can kind of see what's going on uh, without laying on my back and just barely getting a view. But at the same time, like there's still not a lot of room to be anywhere. So here I am. So I move the pedal assembly, or no, well, the whole contraption here back uh, toward the rear of the car, which is definitely opening up a lot of room for this whole thing to be, which is great. But it's clearly, I mean, I definitely don't think I want the, you know, a brake pedal. Uh, I'd have to, that'd be quite, I have to start doing yoga is what I'm saying to operate that brake pedal. 
So I think the idea of separating the pedal assembly from this unit itself is probably a pretty good idea. To figure out if this can go here, I need to start figuring out a shifter kind of setup here, which of course this that I just put in is gonna be in the way. Dang it. All right, I am not an expert on shifters, but I bought this very weirdo eBay special shifter. It's old, so it's not a new, like cheap Mr. Gasket shifter. I was looking at the standard Hearst Competition Plus shifters, which are basically the standard four speed shifter for a side Jimmy Jam transmission, have been forever. And boy, howdy, I nearly pooped my pants. These things are going for like the $500 range by the time you get the shift rods and the mounting brackets and all that stuff. So first good sign is two out of the three bolts lined up. So I have no idea what transmission tail shafts would have a similar pattern, but the original bracket that I took off was only two bolts. Um, Hearst has all sorts of different mechanisms, but uh, like from U-bolt styles that wrap around the transmission to ones that use these bolt holes to ones that use these two bolts on the, trans uh, on the transmission case itself, Short versions, we can make what we need if this thing can work. And uh, I don't know, it's just got this old chrome handle with this crazy shape and this tiny shift ball. Like, it's like the size of a ping pong ball. Most shift levers are like, like a small cue ball. What is that, snooker? I like it. It, like, I like it a lot. But I pulled it off because obviously I can't see it there right now and I wanted to figure out what the shift pattern was, which is, you know, standard four speed. Reverses over and up, one, two, three, four. So I guess let's try this machine out here. So if we're in neutral, we go all the way over, all the way over. And I don't know, maybe this thing needs some friction on it because everything's just swinging like it's a foosball table for crying out loud. Gonna lose that for sure. I would assume that's three, four which makes the middle one, two, and then reverse over and up, which would pull the reverse lever back. It might work. Hell, I don't know. You guys know? Where are you guys? Lost you. I do have a Hearst Competition Plus that I got. Let's see, it needs to rebuild them, or at least to take apart and regrease. I'm not even gonna show you. Trust me, it's a Hearst Competition Plus I got with the craziest, weirdest overdrive transmission, and it's basically like the Mopar four speed, but the fourth gear is an overdrive, and it's made for Chevrolets, and it was a short run for the 80s. Anyway, that thing was attached to it, and I paid, I think, 200 bucks for the transmission, so I got a free shifter, which is great, but I was going to use it for that. I also have brought over my collection of shift rods, because shift rods are crazy shapes, and somehow... We got to go from all of these to all of these shift things, but I think the potential for that, right? If this reverse is low, reverse is going to hang down and pull because there's no tab on there. Although I did buy these Speedway tabs that are made for this thing and they don't fit. We can make it fit, but it doesn't fit right now. So that's why it's not on there because I just freaking tried. To these two back here, we might be able to make this work. So. So far, so good. The brake booster is in a place that it could function. The pedal assembly can move forward. The shifter is there. The Hearst Competition Plus is a little larger, but we still have some room here. Yeah, I gotta keep going. I need to figure out sort of the clutch bell crank situation, and then, I don't know. Then what, guys? Somebody. Bam, time traveled again. I've got this clutch Z-Bar. Now, let's talk about these things a little bit. I, I pulled this out of the K5 Blazer. I pulled the Granny Gear four speed out and put an automatic in it. I understand blasphemy, yada, 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 whatever. It's a daily driver. It now has overdrive. I can do 80 miles an hour in a lifted Blazer, which is not a safe thing to do, but I can do it. I saved the clutch Z-Bar because well, I had some manual transmissions coming up and I really do not like hydraulic clutch mechanisms. Whether they're hydraulic slave cylinders or hydraulic throw out bearings or whatever, I don't, I don't like them because they're a single master cylinder that's like waiting to fail, in my opinion. 
Z-Bar, Bell Crank, Mechanical Clutch Madoodle. You know what doesn't fail? A bell crank. Now granted, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it work. When I was just a wee lad, I couldn't figure it out on my 54 Chevy. But now I'm, I'm bordering, I'm much closer to old fart than I am to wee lad, so I think I can do it this time. This hole right here on the engine block, can you guys see that? Is on all of the first gen small blocks. So it may extend beyond that. I don't really know once it gets, no, you know what? This came off the, an 80s motor actually. Because somebody did a motor swap to in the blazer so uh, it still has the little ball spot in there but there's a little you can kind of see the you can kind of see the ball pivot on this side there's another one that threads into the engine that goes in right here that's kind of our in-car setup right the clutch pedal will be up here and inside the car and when you push it it will rotate and this arm will spin thus actuating that clutch lever. So a bell crank is just a fancy word for a direction changing device, right? Uh, it's called a Z-bar sometimes too, but that's just because of how it looks. So you push this forward, which rotates the entire thing. And if you have a lever that's offset, it'll push things backwards. So our foot can press this way, which will push a rod this way, which will release our clutch. Now, I'm gonna have to modify this guy, but I figured we could shove it in there and also let it take up space. So it's gonna line up somewhere like with the hole in the block. This is the little doodabber, clutch fork is the correct term there, that will push our clutch back. And as this rotates, right, right, see? That'll do the, the pushification. And actually, there's no, I ordered the ball for up here. Apparently I don't have one, but this is pretty well lined up, um, which is pretty great. So I guess it's kind of some Chevrolet standard at least where this arm length is related to its mounting position on the block, which is related to where a clutch fork goes. So that's all good news. Um, this is just a tube, so we're gonna have to cut this and move all of this stuff kind of inboard. Can you see it? I can't see it. Oh, hi, there, there you are. So we're gonna move, we're gonna have to move this piece sort of to the inside of our frame and maybe bend it up and over to catch our clutch pedal that'll come in on, you know, this side of the steering column. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> These things are always so small when you start adding stuff in there. Um, the shifter is below my leg here, but we could bend that over and get it up higher if we wanted to. Maybe I can slide over this way a little bit. The steering column slid down, but that's fine. We understand the general trajectory it's got to go. It's probably got to come straight up this way. Um, it could probably stand to go a little higher, a little steeper of an angle, but we're going to run into the exhaust. This booster assembly clears the shifter and leaves a space for the rods, but I think it puts the pedal assembly in a really inconvenient spot. But if we separate the two, right? If I just cut this part off and then build a pedal assembly bracket that moves everything forward, I think we could still keep everything geometrically lined up for the brake pedal to actuate that lever on the master cylinder. And you can see our clutch Z bar down there. So we just need a pedal over here that'll mash that. This area can be one of the most challenging parts of a hot rod and a place where you can spend way, way more money than you want to by buying the wrong parts. Um, wrong parts meaning totally functioning parts that just don't fit together because everything shares space here and they just have to jive um, with really, really, really tight tolerances. So you wanna be able to get as much of this together as you can before you continue spending money on steering U joints or you know, even mocking up a steering column with a cardboard tube to figure out the length or whatever. Because if you buy a nice shiny I did it column or something like that, uh, it's gonna be, it could be a costly mistake, you know what I mean, if it's not the right length. All right, we have learned a ton from this experiment. 
By moving this back, we can make it fit, but we are likely going to need to separate the pedal assembly and build a custom pedal assembly that moves the pedal assembly forward so that my knee is not in my teeth while I try to push the pedals. This shifter should work or a shifter similar will work in this position, but we may have to bend the arm so it comes off to the side more sort of toward the center of the transmission slash the center of the car because this is kind of under my leg right now. We're going to need a set of shift rods that work around all this stuff. That may be something we can purchase. I don't really know. I have a set of Hearst shift rods around here for either a Muncie or a one of these things. We'll start fitting those and trying it. Our bell crank mechanism is going to need to be modified for the clutch pedal that we're going to have to build based on this part of the assembly, depending on how we hack it to little pieces. The steering column needs a custom steering drop that actually will retain it, pulling it back towards us and, you know, kind of centering it the way we want it. And then we're going to have to cut the steering column down, modify the end to receive whatever steering shafts we need so that the steering shafts can come from our Vega box under the exhaust or to the side of it and then come up over the top of the bell crank, which we'll modify to fit in here. The steering box seems like it's in the right place. So now that this is here, we're gonna to need to figure out what kind of custom brackets we need to hold it on. And then we're gonna to need to figure out how to modify our steering arms, whether we wanna go with our steering set above the wishbones or below. I think both will work. Just, you know, there's a couple ways to skin that cat. And we've got to figure out an order of operations. Oh yeah, and we kind of figured out a seat height, you know, just by stacking two by fours. So this seat height of four and a half inches off the frame is actually pretty decent. So I think that's kind of what I intended with this piece as being a starting point. That's a ton of information, gang. You guys are going to have to pick your particular priorities and what you want to modify. And as you dig in and research, you're going to find that certain things are easier to modify than others, but everything is technically, almost everything is modifiable. Certain sections have different amounts of aftermarket parts that you can get that make your life easier. But, but I highly recommend shoving everything into its kind of place and making sure it fits enough or that you believe it will fit when actually done before you kind of nail anything completely down. I mean, these shelves back here represent many, many mistakes. At least half of this is just leftover parts and leftover parts translates to uh, parts I bought that I thought would fit but did not fit for some reason, either foreseeable or not, mostly probably foreseeable. So it's hundreds of dollars worth of stuff that I can't get rid of and I can pull from when I need it, but the short version is maybe I didn't need to spend all that money or have all this storage for my mistakes on display. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. If you wouldn't mind mashing the like button, I know it's childish, but the YouTube sort of computer wizard machine thinks it's a good thing for the channel. And uh, subscribe, consider subscribing and uh, follow along as we nail down each one of these systems. Steering box, steering column, tie rods, exhaust, clutch Z-bar, shifter, column drop, brake setup, pedal assembly. All of that's coming up in some order when we're gonna go one by one and by God, we're gonna turn this thing into a car. So good luck on your projects out there and we will see you next time on Between the Sharks.